Welcome to The Dice Tower, a video podcast about board games and the people who play them. This is a special episode of The Dice Tower, in which Tom and Melanie Vassell talk about their top 100 games. And now, here are your hosts, Tom, Melody, and Holly Vassell. Welcome to The Dice Tower! Hi, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Melody. And we're, I'm Holly. <laughs> and we're talking about some more of our top 100 games. We're going to show you six games that we think are fantastic, wonderful, marvelous, terrific, and most of all, fun. So let's get to them. First, we're going to start with Melody's, and then we'll get to mine. Great games, here we come. Kings are awaking queens. Yes, there's queens and queens. This is actually one of the first games that I've ever played with Melody. I mean, she was very young, and we and we played it several times. And the game has a bunch of cards that players are going to be drawing from, and they're trying to turn over queen cards and put these queen cards in front of them. So turn over a couple queen cards for us, Melody. Each queen card is worth a certain amount of points. For example, the that queen is the heart queen and she's worth 20 points and then the queen next to her is the rainbow. rainbow queen worth five points and players are playing cards that will let them put down queens and grab other queens but there's also number cards in here and they are used to discard cards to search for more and you can do that by discarding one of a kind two of a kind or a multiplication i mean an addition problem i could say i'm getting rid of four five and nine because four plus five equals nine other than that, it's almost like a kid's version of a take that game. And I like it okay, although I don't think waking these queens up is really that exciting. But I think Melody likes it more than I do. Who can play this game, Melody? Mm, anyone. Here we are with the uh, first of uh, three games that has a gold sound to it, I suppose. This one's Dragon's Gold. This is a game that's out of print, and you know, I hate when I talk to people about games that are out of print, but basically the game is very simple in the sense that there's a bag here that's full of all different treasures. Now these treasures are actually really quite boring. Uh, when you look at them, they're just a bunch of little flat discs, little different discs, and so there's different kinds of treasures that you can find in the bag. Uh, but with these treasures, you're going to be negotiating over them. Some of them are worth three points, some are worth one. Some are worth points only if you have the most of that color. One's worth 15 points, but you don't get any uh, other points from the having majorities of colors. But each time, you have to make a negotiation for different jewels as you, get as, as you kill these dragons. And you only have one minute to do so. You have a timer, and if you don't come to a deal within one minute, no one gets anything. These deals can involve the future, they can involve the past. It's just, you have to make a deal right there and now. It's a great negotiation game, one that I find a lot of fun. Uh, I'm certainly glad I have it in my collection. Uh, if you can fi ever find a used copy, I'd recommend picking it up of Dragon's Gold. because they're throwing snowballs at other players. And the other players are, what are they doing? Sledding down the mountain. Yeah, the game has a pretty neat theme where you're uh, sledding or skateboarding down the mountain while these yetis are on the sidelines throwing snowballs at your people. It's basically a two-player game, or more than two-player, I suppose, as each player takes their racers and use them to maneuver down the mountain. And whatever space you're maneuvering on, uh, for example, the green guy, when he's throwing a snowball at you here, he only needs a three or higher to knock you off there, while he needs a six to knock you off there. But there you can see the red one only needs a four or higher to knock you off. So in the middle, both snowmen can throw snowballs at you, uh, but on the one side, only one can, but he has a much better chance. There's some strategy, but it seems like when we play, uh, Melody never makes it down the mountain because I'm always knocking her off uh, her sled, and I never make it down the mountain because she's always knocking me, my guys off their sled. It's a lot of fun, very interesting to play game. Um, and I enjoy it because of the sledding down the mountain so quickly. And you? Me too. Tales of Arabian Nights, or the Arabian Nights, is not fascinating because of its absolutely gorgeous and beautiful board. It's a really neat board and you move around. And there's all kinds of cards and different things that can happen. But what makes Tales of Arabian of Nights is wonderful is this book. It's a choose-your-own-adventure-type style book. As you move around the board, 
I might read to you that you try to, uh, you meet a poor beggar, and you listen as the other begins a tale of woe as you have never heard before. If you have no skills, weeping uncontrollable, you give them all the coins you are carrying with you. What's wrong with you? Why would you do such a thing? So you lose your money at that point in time, and it, it feels very random to some people. They say, how can you like a, a game like this where this book here, everything about it is just one big story, and you don't know what's going to happen yet. But do we like stories? Yes, I love stories too. And Tales of Arabian Nights, you feel like you are in the story. The decisions you make, I don't know if they're going to help you or hurt you. And you know, sometimes it really feels like you're just randomly flailing along, seeing what will happen, and your life gets worse and worse and worse. But eventually, someone's story comes to a close, and they win the game. And that, my friends, is why you play Tales of Arabian Nights. Not because of who wins the game, but because of the journey on the way there. sticks out of a circle. Well, this is actually what the game looks like. What you're doing is you're taking these sticks and you build a sculpture on the table that looks kind of like this. And then you're going to be pulling one of the sticks out without the whole thing falling down. How do you know what stick to pull out? You roll a die. And so you roll that die and you pull the stick out without making the whole thing fall over. And that's basically the, the bigger sticks are harder to pull out. Melody just knocked it over, so I win. Uh, again, <laughs> so actually, it's a pretty fun dexterity game. Once you get good at it, you can pull out all the six almost, except for three of them. Uh, but it is a pretty neat idea. All you do is roll the die, grab a stick, pull it out without making your thing fall over. Kind of a pain to set up once you, until you learn the trick of it. But I enjoy it quite a bit, although as a dexterity game, maybe for me, there's a lot of other ones I'd rather play. Why do you like this one so much? Because you're trying to pull out sticks. Yeah, but why is that so much better than other ones? Because it has sticks with a ring. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it is a pretty neat idea. Ink and Gold is a game that has many different versions. The newest one has these little tents that come with it. But in this game, each player is an explorer looking for different treasures that you'll find in the course of a game. And when you go into the this temple, you will be getting treasures as you go throughout it. And you have to decide each turn, will I stay or will I go? And as you could go on, the, the treasures will accumulate, but traps also may come. And if too many traps come, you get nothing. But the whole game comes down to, should I stay or should I go? And if you go, you'll get treasure. But if you had stayed, you might have gotten more treasure. It's a good push your luck game, and it works for up to eight people. Uh, the components themselves are okay, nothing really to write home about, although they're, they're very nice and the artwork's great, but it's just the whole package of a game. It's one of those games that I bring out and never fails. I see it work all the time, and so it must, must, must have a place on my top 100 list. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed those games. I hope uh, that maybe gives you some ideas of games that you might like. We'll be talking about some more of our top 100 games quite soon. Until then, I'm Tom Vessel. And I'm saying. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.